Hello, and here's another Piano Pandemictivities book review. This time, I'd like to mention After the Golden Age by Kenneth Hamilton. Uh, this book is about the era of Franz Liszt and Paderewski and uh, these famous uh, players who, you know, sometimes are, are, are put together under the term Golden Age, the Golden Age of piano playing. Uh, and uh, I find any book about piano history fascinating. I'll read any book about piano history uh, because I just I love all this stuff. I love all these stories. But what is most interesting to me about this particular book is that it delves significantly into the culture of concert giving, and in particular, the culture of the solo recital. And I came away from this book uh, a, a little bit... I won't say shaken, that's maybe an overstatement, but, but um, thoughtful about the strong traditions of solo concert giving that we have inherited and how um, actually somewhat arbitrary they are. They're, they're recent and they're arbitrary uh, and, and therefore they don't feel as strong to me as they once felt. For example, uh, the idea of an audience being quiet and polite and actually listening to the music instead of snacking and chatting or playing checkers or something. I, I was quite amazed to find out, um, you know, just like the generally rowdy, bad behavior of audiences. It sounded worse as a player, but it sounded like a lot more fun as an audience member. <laughs> so uh, it made me think. The idea of the decorum. Uh, everyone has to know when to clap and when not to clap and... and, and uh, you know, you have to bow and you have to keep your feet together and you have to stay on stage for this, but you can come off stage for that. And just all of these things that we have accepted as non-negotiables. And in fact, even in, in music institutions, we've sort of written them into policies. You know, your senior recital must follow these guidelines and you have to do this and write program notes and your program is exactly copy edited this way. All of that made me come away going, we don't really have to follow any of that. I mean, it's all from the later 19th century and um, the audience that, you know, and the culture that gave rise to that is gone from the face of the earth. So why can't concerts be different? Why can't we just do completely different things? So th th that was what I came away from it with. Um, Hamilton is a, a, a fun writer who does not get deep in the weeds of musicology and sources and footnotes and arguments over historiography or Werk Troya or anything else. It's, he's just a great storyteller. Um, so it's fairly light reading if you're an educated musician and it's just wonderful history. And, and it sort of shakes things up a little bit um, about why we do concerts the way we do. So I'm interested in any, anything about the history of my instrument anything about the history of concert giving, also as it bears upon the idea of um, strict compositions and realizing the composer's attention, intentions as opposed to improvisation. Um, things they used to do like mix single movements of Beethoven sonatas with music of other people, <laughs> just like things we would consider so disrespectful. That's actually much of the concert culture of the 19th century. So, you know, it'll shatter a lot of your cozy assumptions about morality, I'm sure. Um, it's a great read. History We Should Know as Musicians. Recommended After the Golden Age by Kenneth Hamilton. See you next time. Ciao.